all right then uh, welcome back everyone let's solve this question uh, united with stand so i guess this is a uh, the 13th video in the series so if you are following the playlist uh, please like the videos because then youtube is going to recommend these videos to more people anyway uh, so let me read out the question for you given an array a of length n containing integers there are two initially empty arrays b and c so basically right now we have an array of length n which has some integers in it n integers and initially we have two empty arrays b and c you need to add each element of the array a to exactly one of the arrays b or c in order to satisfy the following conditions so we have to like right now array a has some elements and elements and we have to add each element of array a to exactly one of the arrays b or c in order to satisfy the following conditions so basically it seems like we have to just distribute a's elements to arrays b and c and what conditions needs to be followed let's see both arrays b and c are non empty so we have to put at least one element in both b and c so that explains this n has to be greater than equals to 2 right so yeah n has greater than equals to 2 right because b and c cannot be empty more formally uh, let lb be the length of array b and lc be the length of array c fine so yeah that's what they're saying lb and lc both have to be greater than equals to 1 so you have to partition in a way that at least uh, uh, that at least one element is present in both of the arrays b and c for any two indices i and j uh, i is basically an index of array b and j is basically one of the index of array c cj is not a divisor of bi cj is not a divisor of bi so basically you have to partition in a way uh, such that no element in c no element in this uh, c uh, should divide divide any element in this b right so the question is pretty straightforward we have a array of length n we have a array of length n when we have to partition it into two arrays two non empty arrays to be very precise okay in a way in a way such that uh, non empty arrays is fine one condition is they have to be non empty another condition is c basically the c array cannot contain any divisor like any element in c should not divide any of the element in b basically that's what this line means right so for two indices i and j where i is the index of array b and these index of array c c is not a divisor of b basically none of the elements in c should divide should divide any of the elements in b right that's what it means basically right so no element in c should be able to divide a element is it should not be a divisor of an element in b i guess uh, we are good with the question so output the array b and c that can be obtained or output minus 1 if they do not exist okay so if you cannot do it uh, then you will have to output minus 1 let's just uh, see the input and output then so first line is anyway it's a test case input number of test cases then for each test case we have n okay length of array a and uh, n integers okay so n integers and the values are in 1 to 10 power 9 fine and for each test case output a single integer if solution does not exist minus 1 basically mm -hmm. if a solution does not exist that is you cannot have any, you have a partition which satisfies this both of the conditions then just print minus 1 otherwise on the first line print two integers lb and lc basically length of the arrays b and c that you have in the second line output lb basically array b and the third line uh, uh second line basically output lb integers so basically the array b and in the third line output um, output the elements of array c right if there are multiple solution output any one of them now this is again a a rated question right so the question is little bit uh, like it seems like there's something like when people see that is okay I have to check for if something is divisor or not. Maybe there is some number theory logic involved here. Yeah, definitely number theory would logic would be required here. But since this, it is a a rated question, uh, you can safely assume that not a complicated number theory logic would be required. Anyway, so let's not let's uh, simply let's make some observations one by one and see. So let us uh, think of cases when we are definitely sure that solution does not exist. What are those cases? Like one case. Uh, like when does a solution does not exist when you cannot satisfy both of these conditions right so if all the elements are equal if all the elements are equal you can never have this partition why uh, because like all the elements are equal right so no matter what partition you do uh, there will be an element in basically since all elements are equal let's say these are 2 2 2 right so no matter what partition i do uh, a 2 always divides 2 right an element always divides itself so you cannot have a array c such that uh, it doesn't divide any other element it doesn't uh, divide an element uh, in b right so no matter how you construct c you will always divide an element in b but our question asks us that uh, c should be constructed in a way that uh, it should not divide any element in b so if all the elements are equal definitely solution is not possible so here you can see if all elements are equal solution is not possible and uh, okay so it seems like uh, this by i'm just looking at the test cases here you can see uh, all elements are distinct fine uh, then solution exists so for example this is an array right five one two three four five how do you split it uh, Maybe I can just do something like this, right? So what they have said, they have taken one three five for the array B, one three five for the array B, yeah, one three five the array B and two four for array C. 
and elements 2 and 4 do, do not divide. So basically, of course, any element here does not divide any element here, right? The elements 2 and 4 does not, does, do not divide 1, 2, 3, and 5. So this is the question. Now, this is one of the questions uh, where uh, looking at the sample cases, you might uh, try to think a lot more than you should. Uh, but uh, let's uh, go to the iPad and try to make little more sense out of this okay. question. Uh, let's try to get some sense of, of this question. So what this question is uh, basically saying is, uh, we have an array A, we have an array A, and we want to partition it into two arrays. We want to actually partition it into two arrays, B and C, such that uh, no element in this C should be a divisor of B. Now, this is this line, right? CJ is not a divisor of B. This is the line that we are concerned here. Now, what does it mean uh, when I say some number A is a divisor of B? Some number A is a divisor of B. For example, two is a divisor of four, right? 3 is a divisor of 6, right? So for example, 5 is a divisor of 10. So what is the simplest kind of relation when I say that some number is divisor of other? That if A is a divisor of B, that is A divides B, A has to be less than equals to B, right? A has to be less than equals to B, okay? So this observation, keep this observation in mind, right? This is an observation. Uh, if A has to, A is a divisor of B, then it is less than equals to B, right? So hear me out, hear me out. If I want to divide it into two arrays, basically, B and C, and I want to make sure that no element here should be a divisor of any element here, wouldn't uh, it make sense, like, wouldn't be it very easy if I just put the greatest element here, right? The greatest element here, and here all the remaining elements, right? Right, okay, uh, let me repeat myself again. So what I'm saying is, uh, what I'm saying is, I want to divide A, I want to divide A into two parts, right? B and C. And no element in this C, no element in this C, uh, no element in this C should divide an element in B. So hear me out. And I know if some element, if X is a divisor of Y, X has to be less than equals to Y. If I have to make sure that this inequality doesn't hold, what I can simply do is just put the greatest element here, right? Put the greatest element put the greatest element here and all the remaining elements here, all the remaining elements here, right? So if you just put the greatest element, greatest element in this C, you're always sure that all the elements in C are greater than all the elements in B, so they can never be divisor of B, right? So no element in C cannot be divisor of B, right? Of course, like if all elements are equal anyway, so one case I've already figured out, if all elements are equal, if all elements equal, if all elements are equal, then anyway, you'll have to print a minus one. You have no option. But I'm just considering the case when all elements are not equal. So what I'm telling you is the simplest approach, the simplest approach is put the greatest element in C. So definitely sure since uh, all the elements in C are greater than B and remaining elements in B. Now, since you're sure all the elements in this C are always greater than all the elements in this guy, all the elements in guy, this, this equality will never hold. And if this equality never hold, definitely no element in C can be a divisor of B. So that is the question basically. The question is done and dusted here. So Right, you just put the greatest element, uh, like, it depends, right, if a greatest element can occur more than one number of time, right, because the elements are not distinct. So, put the, put all the greatest elements in this C guy, in this C, and all the remaining elements in B. Or, other way around, you can think like, put the smallest element here, put the smallest element in B, put the smallest element in B, and all the remaining. This is one and the same thing, right? Right, this is one and the same thing. Again, this is the case when all elements are not equal, okay? If all elements are equal, then anyway, we cannot do anything. If all elements are not equal, what you can do is, you have two options. Either put the greatest element in C, either put the greatest element in C and remaining in B, or put the smallest element in B and all the remaining in C. And why is that? It's, it didn't come out of nowhere. Because if someone, like if some element has to be divisive of other element, it has to be smaller than equals to that element. If I am making sure, but here I'm making sure, C always contains, C always contains bigger elements than B, right? I'm making sure C always contains bigger elements then B. So, no element in C can be divisor of B. So, yeah, that's the logic. I hope you got it. Uh, let's just code it up quickly. All right, so let's uh, quickly code up uh, the solution. Let me just first take the input. So, first uh, is n, the size of our array. Then we have the array itself. Array of n for n i equals to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. So, this I guess you are all are familiar with. Uh, I guess I'm, I've been doing this again and again in past 12 odd videos. So, I don't need to explain this code to you now. So here's the pseudocode that I have written. Uh, if all elements are same, just print minus one. Otherwise, if uh, at least two elements are there, you just make sure C always has elements greater than B. In that case, uh, no element in C can be a divisor of an element in B. 
right? So just put all the smallest element, basically all the free, like all the polar, like basically since the elements cannot be distinct, uh, for example, uh, here you can see, um, there can be one more two here, right? There can be one more two here. So just put all the smallest element in B and all the remaining elements in C. This will make sure that uh, C always has elements greater than B, right? So let's quickly do it. So how are you gonna do it basically? Uh, what do we need here? Like, how do you decide what, what data structure you're gonna use? So you need to actually keep also track of how many times an element is occurring. So that clearly gives an idea you maybe you have to use a map here, right? So I'll just use a map here and quickly generate the frequency map. Auto A, ARR, NP of A plus plus. Okay, so we have created a map now. Now, first things first, if all elements are same, that mp.size will be equals to one, right? So basically this is a case where all elements are same. Here we cannot have any partition. So we'll just print uh, minus one, we'll print minus one followed by new line. Else, what you can do is, you can just put the uh, smallest element in B, right? So what is that element first? Uh, that is basically like, since you know, uh, in map elements are stored in sorted manner. So I hope you know this. So map is sorted by keys, by the way. Map is sorted by keys. So this is one of, one more reason why I use map and not just unordered map. I required the frequency because I had to copy all the all the elements. So I need the frequencies. And then I also require the elements to be stored in sorted form, right? I, I have to retrieve them in sorted form because I want the smallest element. Now let's just retrieve the first element then. So what is the first element? Uh, basically the smallest element. The first element will be the smallest element. So yeah, let's do it. So int element is basically begin begin of mp first right so this is the smallest element and int frequency will be begin of mp second right so begin of mp basically returns a key value an iterator uh, from which the first guy is the, actually the key so this returns the key which is our element and this returns the value which is actually our frequency okay that's what it is so this is uh, that and uh, what we have to print is we actually have to take we have to consider the length of this array so first we have to print the length of this array right we have to calculate length of this array so now we have got the array b so if you want i can create the array and print it or directly print it we can directly print it right so so first we have to print actually lb and lc okay first we have to print lb and lc that i'll come back to it but now let's just print b first i'll come back to lb lc that's a simple thing so if you want to print B, uh, what you can do is you can just uh, print B uh, frequency number of times, that element frequency number of times. So for int i equals to zero, i less than uh, frequency, i plus plus, c out element space, and in the end, uh, you need a new line here, right? So nothing much, right? I just take out the first element and I printed it, right? What is the length of this array B, by the way? What is the length of this array B? The length of array B is frequency, right? So if how many times is okay? I guess this is output from some other question. Forget about it. Uh, but the idea is, uh, what is the length of array B? I'm just putting this, putting the smallest elements here. So uh, how, however number of times smallest element is existing, that will be the, that will be LB. What is LC? Of course, L minus F frequency, right? All the remaining elements, <laughs> uh, nothing much, right? Simple. So this is uh, the length of the array B and N minus frequency, all the remaining elements is the length of array C. So B is printed. Now we have to print array C. So array C is anything but this guy. So maybe I can just, uh, erase, maybe I can just um, erase this element, np.erase element. So what it does is uh, it deletes, it deletes the entry with key, yeah, with given key basically, with given key. So we have, this element is deleted from a map and now you can just simply print all the elements. So for auto it, or you can do something like this for key value. So this I guess requires C++ standard uh, 17 if I'm not mistaken can just print uh, yeah you can you have to actually print uh, this key value number of times right so okay let me be more specific element frequency i have to print all the remaining elements uh, but you have to maintain the count right if an element is occurring two two times you have to print it two times the element is occurring three times you have to print it three times so now for int i equals to zero i less than frequency i plus plus print this element after space and then just simply new line Right, so I hope you know it, what I'm doing. So for all the remaining elements also, there may be some duplicate elements. So go through the map and for a given element, print all of its occurrences, right? You have to print all the remaining elements. Fine, cool. So that's that, uh, am I missing anything? Uh, let me just quickly confirm. So this is the input, no issues here. I created a frequency map, ferry size is one. Like if unique elements is one, we can just simply print minus one and get away with it. Otherwise, it's always possible. Take the smallest element. So this is the smallest element and its frequency. 
smallest element in frequency is basically our b and what is c all the remaining elements and this is erasing that element and all the remaining elements i am printing it and this is just a length like the frequency of the smallest element will be lb and n minus frequency will be lc i guess this is right let me just quickly run it and see if it works hmm it is a it seems okay so first case it's minus 1 it is supposed to be minus 1 and for rest all the cases it should be working let's just see one of the cases for example this uh, second last test case okay so i have to print space between them right i'm not printing space between them that was one thing yeah now it works. so second last test case if you want to see uh 2 and 3 or 7 right so basically 2 and 5 so we have taken the uh, i'm talking about this test case by the way guys so seven elements so i'll just take the smallest guys smallest guys one and one in one array one 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 array on all the remaining elements in the remaining array basically this is c this is b so this seems to be working let me just uh, quickly submit it and see yeah maybe there's some uh, issue right now going on uh, but i'm pretty sure this should work i guess there was some uh, there is i guess system testing going on for some last contest uh, because of it uh, it is showing in queue let me just uh, see my submission in the previous case so i just have to be sure what did i do it yeah almost similar right 